Welcome back to Zig for the Uninitiated. My name's Tyler. Today I want to talk about the Arena Allocator. As I've been promising for quite a while. Um, so let's let's get into it. The Arena Allocator is perhaps one of the more commonly used allocators in um, Zig. Uh, it's one that's often suggested because it solves a pretty important problem. And to understand that problem, I want to harken back a bit to what we talked about last time, and I've got a, an example problem here. So when you're doing it, if you're building a debugger, so I, I've been working on a debugger on the side for my videos. And when you're building a debugger, you're, you're following this dwarf uh, specification, the dwarf debugging specification. It's just what uh, Linux uses. It's very common on Unix systems, uh, in particular, paired with elf uh, format so if you know what the elf uh, binary format for executables is then the dwarf is just the debug format that goes along with the elf format mm, that's all beside the point so don't really need to worry about it all you need to know is a, spe a specification and then part of the specification there is um, a part where you need to maintain a list of directory names and a list of file names. So the directory names are the path all the way up until the file, and the file name is just a file, and they're linked based off of the file, keeps track of the ID of the directory that it belongs to. So once again, more than you really need to know. Um, the key thing is that you need to know that they need to keep a list of directory names and a list of file names. And say you were working with this, and I'm not saying this is necessarily the best way to do it, but you're working with this, and you need to create this list. Well, you're going to have a list here, big old list, and that list, right? So we'll, we'll draw a little arrow from directories to the list here, and that list is going to need to maintain a set of pointers to a bunch of other strings, of other a bunch of strings, because each directory name could be different, differently sized. So you could have, you know, maybe your root directory here, and then you know, some other directory name there. And, you know, I'm just kind of doing this like this. And so imagine you've got this system here set up. And each of those, right, is really being pointed to. We're going to do that in blue. Okay. And so each, each of these strings is pointed to from the arena. Uh, your array or your array list, right? In Zig, this is going to be an array list, most likely. And then each of these are going to be you know, slices of U8s. Okay? And you're going to have the same thing all over again for your list of file names. You'll need a list. That might need to be growable, depending on how many you're going to have. You might not know as you're going through the system how many you're going to have at first. And you definitely don't know at compile time, <laughs> right? Because that would make any sense. A debugger needs to be able to work on large file systems or large projects and small projects. So you're going to have the exact same thing here with a bunch of you know smaller files here. So the problem is how are you going to clean this up? Okay. And mind you that this is a small example. You could imagine what if we had tons of lists of strings here for the debugger that you might need, and you had lots of strings, and you just wanted to clean it all up. If you're using the debug allocator, which is what the general purpose allocator has been renamed to, if you're using the debug allocator, you need to go through and you need to manually deinit all of these array lists, which would then in turn, through their deinit process, have to go through and manually deinit all of these strings. In fact, you might have to manually deinit all these strings yourselves. Um, and that's a lot of work. And it can be kind of complicated to keep all this, which is essentially just accounting of saying, okay, I'm keeping account. Did I properly defer and 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 uh, remove every item in the list, they go through all the list and whatnot. So that's your problem. How do I manage this without going crazy? 
And this is what the arena allocator is created to solve. What the arena allocator does is say, hey, you know what? If this is my dwarf debugging header, and this is part of the header, I probably want to hang on to all this stuff at the same time. There's never, I'm not going to really ever delete one directory or delete one file name from my list. I'm not going to delete just the array list. I'm not going to free that. I'm not going to free the directory list. Really, when I'm done with the header, I just want it all to go away. And so what you can do with the arena allocator is treat this whole space as just one kind of blob. And when you're done with it, you can call the dnit function. So I'm going to star this real quick. So what the dnit will do is basically select your whole memory area or your arena and delete it and just say it's all free now. And so that's how it works. And we'll get into a little later on, on how the arena allocator actually works a bit on the internals so you can understand it better. But that's the basic gist. Now, there is one thing I do want to share with you is that there is another option with the arena allocator that makes it really nice to work with is say that you're creating a whole bunch of these headers. I don't know why you'd be doing that. You really don't need to do it. But let's say you're creating some object like this header and you're creating hundreds of them in a loop. What you wouldn't want to do is allocate all that space, then free it, then allocate it, then free it, then allocate it and free it. What you'd probably want to do is say, hey, I want to allocate enough space. And you know, as I go, if I need to add more space, yes. But when I'm done, when I'm done with the, all the stuff in this area of the loop, I'd like to reset the space. I want to keep the space. I want to keep all the memory that I've gotten, but I want to reset it back to zero basically. And so what that'll do is the reset function. You have a reset function and it can be configured. You can reset and free everything, but you can also reset with retain, which is basically like grabbing all this and removing it, but maintaining this space so that when you go through the next iteration of your loop, you don't have to then actually call alloc and not to go to the operating system or your sub allocator. You don't need to go them and actually do memory. You already have the memory and you can start working with that in the system. And the great thing about that is once you've allocated the largest object that you're going to, you will never have to actually allocate anymore. You'll just use that arena for your little tight loop that you're using it for. So now let's, let's take a look a bit about the internals of the arena allocator. And we're not going to go too far in depth because I got bit in the uh, last time by going into the internals a little bit. Um, if, as I mentioned earlier, last video, I talked about the general purpose allocator and then I uh, posted the video. And as soon as I posted the video, I found out that the general purpose allocator was being renamed to the debug allocator and actually had some internal changes. Not too big. The video is still worth watching, but just know that if you watch the video, the you will not be able to use well you can and zero dot 14 still use what is the general purpose allocator but it's just an alias to the debug allocator and you might as well use it for that um and as a side note i think the debug allocator is a better name for the general purpose allocator because it's really just good for debugging um i mean it's built for debugging and it's really good at that but it's not great to use generally uh, because it's really slow and it's slow because it's got all the debugging abilities in it. So that's enough of the side about the GPA debug allocator. The arena allocator, I have here a solution from Advent of Code last, uh, well, this past year. And in it, I use the arena allocator. So I do want to show kind of what I did here. Um, this is question eight. In question eight, you had to create a map of station lists and find anti nodes. And if you've done it, you might remember it. But what I had to do is create a station list, very similar to what we we're kind of talking about earlier. So I had to create a list of coordinates. And these coordinates look like this. And so I had to maintain a whole bunch of lists and I didn't really want to worry about it. And so I have this create, right? I just do global alloc create and I created a station list and it was great and everything. And as soon as I was done, I had to init. I probably didn't actually have the DNA. <laughs> I never DNA'd my, my data. Um, 
so that's on me but if i have right up here at the main i can just do like defer uh let's see it would be global arena arena dot d init okay and that would just d init my arena at once i was done using it for the whole time so going to the internals of the arena allocator really kind of simple inside the arena allocator you're going to get a child allocator and some state and so the child allocator is the the thing that you need to provide so if i call if i look at the init function all it asks for is a child allocator. And in fact, the debug allocator is a great and often recommended allocator for a child allocator. Uh, I think I've also used the page allocator a lot because why not? I mean, I'm just going to get a page of data and I don't really care. That works really nice. So as I was saying, pretty simple on the arena allocator. You have the state and the state itself is not that complex. It has a buffer list, which is just a singly linked list of sizes of allocations and so what actually the arena allocator does is and i'll draw a picture of this rather than allocate you know one thing what it's actually doing is creating lots of little spaces or not lots of little spaces what it's doing is what it's doing is creating a space for you to allocate in and if it can right you know say you allocate a bunch of stuff inside it and you want to allocate some more inside it and then it gets it gets too small what will happen is it will try to grow the arena and and it'll keep it now if it can't grow the arena say you want to allocate another one and it can no longer grow what it'll do is you know link this to a new space it'll create a new space and start allocating there and so then when you free, you know, once you're done, it's like you actually have two arenas here. And it will go through and clean them all up when you call dnit. And the same thing with reset. It'll go through and, and clean it all up, and then you'll start working with whatever space you have um, in there. So I can show that right here. This is what the buff that's what the buffer list is for, is creating all the buffers that are being used as the, the different arenas. And then the end index is indexing into that buffer how far uh, has actually been used. And so that's used. So when you want to re or you want to allocate something new, if there's enough space, it uses the end index to tell if there's enough space for something new, or if it needs to grow the uh, space, or needs to create a new node in the list. And that's it. I, you know, that's the arena allocator. Everything else is pretty much old hat. You free, you create, you destroy, and and you alloc, uh, resize, and all the old, all everything else that's there. Uh, the only real interesting thing is, like I said, this reset uh, function. If I go to reset, there it is, the reset function, which, as you read the documentation, tells you. You're able to reset the uh, arena and you have different modes. And so the first one is free all, which will just release all the allocated memory. It's basically like free, um, except for it frees everything. So it's kind of like DNA. And then you've got retain capacity and uh, retain with limit. And so retain capacity says clear everything, but I want to maintain the capacity that I've already received. And then retain with limit is the same, except that if it's too much space, then it will actually shrink the memory down to that limit. And that's it. So this is it for my videos on allocators. I'm unless there's like a you know a big uprising saying that you guys want to learn more about allocators. I, I don't really know what else to talk about with them. And so I think the next videos we're going to start delving into different topics. But if there's anything that you'd like me to talk about with with regards to Zig, um, please let me know in the comments. I do want to apologize. It's been a long time since I made a video. I've uh, been just really busy uh, between home, work, uh, church stuff, and then my computer broke. And so it took me a while to, one, get a computer. I bought a computer from a... I, won't, I don't want to name them. Uh, <laughs> but let's just say a certain... Uh, 
vendor and I didn't, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't working. So I had to return that first computer and I, I bought a new, uh, a new one, uh, a new computer from Lenovo. So I can recommend Lenovo. I do like their computers the, you know, it took a while to get things set up. So sorry about that. I hopefully I'll be able to make more videos more frequently here in the future and, and start streaming again. I've really enjoyed, uh, streaming, just programming. So anyways, thanks for watching and Happy coding.